Ash, and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos, inside the Ice House now. Very delighted to be joined by a repeat guest, Rick Goings. He's the chairman and CEO of Tupperware. Now tell me, I know that the future of work is on your mind. Why is that? Well, one of our key themes, now it's one of the 10 initiatives here at Davos, is gender parity. And part of gender parity is economic parity and her having a job and we see this collapse of jobs. We now, you know, the report came out this last week of five million jobs lost, but really in the next 10 years, there are gonna be 1.5 billion people that uh, don't have any jobs. And the key issue is a redefinition of how people are gonna make uh, income. And it's gonna include a lot of self-employment and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in this because of course, it shouldn't be rocket science that gender parity and flexibility in the workplace, um, or perhaps even the gig economy, as it's sometimes called, um, are all connected. Do you think you can earn a living this way? Oh, absolutely. Well, very interesting. If we talk about the history of jobs, really jobs in multinational corporations didn't start happening till about uh, the mid-19th century. Mm -hmm. And now everybody thinks when we talk about if people have money, it's because they have a job. Well, what did people do before that time, they were involved in cottage industries, agricultural, fishermen, uh, they were merchants, mm -hmm. self-employment before that time. Well, it's interesting. I think it's one of the shocking things today is most valuable corporation in the world is Apple, mm -hmm. worth three quarters of a, bill, of a trillion dollars, only have 110,000 employees. The biggest employer in the world is Walmart, has more than two million jobs. Jobs aren't coming back, and if people think that the cavalry is coming and bringing jobs to the developing world, they're not. So that raises the question about skills and increasing skills. What do you think, what do you find in your position, in your company, are the kind of skills that you see the workers with flexibility using the most? Well, it, it, I think, Edie, there you first have to bifurcate the world mm -hmm. Uh, and when you talk about gender parity between the established markets of the world, Western Europe mm -hmm. and the United States, and all the emerging markets of the world, which are 87% of the world's population. Mm -hmm. uh, I get it about the STEM jobs. Mm -hmm. I get it. But there's simply not going to be enough STEM jobs out there. And when they talk about women and skills, they always keep saying, well, they're not going to move forward until they have these cognitive kind of skills. I was given a presentation at lunch, and I didn't know we'd talk about this. Mm -hmm. I wrote on the bottom of a piece of paper, though, the skills that women have that, that are actually non-cognitive skills, mm -hmm. okay? First of all, leadership, empathy, enthusiasm, uh, resilience. I can go down, there's 10 major things, mm -hmm. and you'd say, well, my goodness. If an entrepreneur didn't have these skills, they wouldn't make it. So many of the women, they already have it, already have it. So I think that is the future. It's, it's and. We do both. We do the STEM stuff, but more of the jobs are going to be self-employment, and we do these things as well. Thank you so much, Rick, for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion here in Davos, and I'm Edie Bash.